In 2013, a major genetic study shook the foundations of what we thought we knew about Ashkenazi Jewish origins. Researchers found that nearly 40% of Ashkenazi Jews can trace their maternal ancestry to just four women, not from the Middle East, but from prehistoric Europe. At the same time, paternal DNA revealed clear roots in the ancient Levant. How can a population be both Middle Eastern and European? And what does this tell us about their true origins? For decades, historians, linguists, and geneticists have debated where Ashkenazi Jews came from. Were they direct descendants of ancient Israelites? Or were they formed through centuries of migration, intermarriage, and conversion across Europe? Now, using tools like mitochondrial DNA, Y-chromosome markers, and autosomal genome analysis, scientists are uncovering a story far more complex and far more fascinating than previously imagined. This is the genetic journey of the Ashkenazi Jews, a population shaped by exile, adaptation, and deep ancestral ties across continents. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to Human Discovery for more deep dives into human history and ancient ancestry. The Ashkenazi Jews represent one of the most studied diaspora populations in the world. As of the early 21st century, they make up approximately 70 to 75% of Jews globally. Most trace their immediate ancestry to Central and Eastern Europe, especially Germany, Poland, Lithuania, and Russia. Yet their cultural memory, religious texts, and identity assert a much older origin. The ancient kingdoms of Israel and Judah in the Levant. Historically, Jewish communities have been defined not just by religion, but by shared cultural practices and a distinct ethno-linguistic identity. After the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE by the Romans, many Jews were exiled from Judea, initiating centuries of dispersal and diaspora life. The Ashkenazi branch of this diaspora emerged in the early medieval period, first mentioned in historical records from the Rhineland region around the 10th century CE. Over time, this group expanded into Eastern Europe, maintaining religious cohesion while absorbing linguistic and, possibly, genetic influences from surrounding populations. But how much of their ancestry is truly Middle Eastern, and how much has been shaped by Europe? Modern genetics provides new tools to revisit this ancient mystery. Using autosomal DNA, mitochondrial DNA, passed down from mothers, and Y-chromosome markers, passed down from fathers, researchers have uncovered striking patterns in the Ashkenazi gene pool. Let's begin with Y-chromosome studies, which trace paternal lineages. Multiple studies, including one published in Nature Communications in 2013, reveal that the majority of Ashkenazi Jewish men, between 60 to 70 percent, share Y-chromosome haplogroups common in the Middle East, particularly haplogroups J1, J2, and E1b1b. These markers are prevalent among modern populations in the Levant, including Palestinians, Druze, and Lebanese. This strongly suggests that the paternal ancestors of Ashkenazi Jews originated in the ancient Near East. However, the story becomes more complex when examining mitochondrial DNA, which traces maternal ancestry. A landmark 2006 study led by Doran Behar, later confirmed by a 2013 paper in Nature Communications, found that approximately 40% of Ashkenazi Jews descend from just four maternal lineages, known as founder haplogroups. These mitochondrial lineages do not trace back to the Levant, but rather to prehistoric Europe, particularly regions near northern Italy and possibly the Caucasus. This unexpected finding raised a key question. Did Ashkenazi men from the Middle East marry and assimilate local European women during the early stages of the diaspora? Autosomal DNA, which reflects ancestry from both parents, paints a blended picture. On average, Ashkenazi Jews show roughly 50 to 60 percent Middle Eastern ancestry and 40 to 50 percent European ancestry. The European component is largely Southern European, especially Italian and Greek, rather than Northern or Eastern European. This suggests that the genetic mixing occurred early, likely in the Mediterranean, before the population moved north into Central Europe. To understand these results fully, we must align them with the historical record. The earliest major Jewish presence in Europe outside the Roman Empire was in Italy, dating back to the 1st century BCE. Roman records mention Jewish communities in cities like Rome, Naples, and Venosa. These early settlers likely came from Judea, 
following Roman conquests and economic migration. During the first century CE, Jewish communities established themselves across southern Europe and the Balkans. It is in this context that the mitochondrial DNA suggests intermarriage with local women occurred. Women who converted to Judaism and became part of the community. These early maternal ancestors account for much of the unique mitochondrial DNA found in Ashkenazi populations today. By the 8th to 9th centuries CE, Jews began migrating north into Germanic lands, especially along the Rhine River. The term Ashkenaz itself is derived from a medieval Hebrew word for Germany. In these Rhineland communities, Ashkenazi culture began to take shape, including the development of the Yiddish language, which blends medieval German with Hebrew and Slavic influences. After facing repeated persecution in Western Europe, including expulsions from England in 1290, France in 1306, and parts of Germany, many Jews moved eastward. By the 15th century, Eastern Europe, particularly Poland and Lithuania, had become the primary center of Ashkenazi Jewish life. Here, the Ashkenazi population expanded rapidly. Yet, despite this growth, genetic studies show that the population remained unusually homogeneous. This is a sign of a founder effect, where a small ancestral population gives rise to a much larger one with limited outside genetic input. This genetic bottleneck likely occurred between the 13th and 15th centuries and is a key reason why Ashkenazi Jews today exhibit higher rates of certain inherited diseases, such as Tay-Sachs and Gosha disease. When we weigh the evidence, a more complete and nuanced narrative emerges. The paternal ancestry of Ashkenazi Jews points clearly to origins in the Levant, consistent with historical accounts of Jewish exile from ancient Israel and Judah. The maternal ancestry, in contrast, points toward European origins, indicating that local women, likely in the Mediterranean region, joined Jewish communities in the early diaspora. The autosomal genome reflects this dual heritage, with roughly equal contributions from Middle Eastern and European sources. Importantly, the European component appears to have originated in Southern Europe, not in the Germanic or Slavic regions where Ashkenazi Jews later lived in large numbers. This admixture likely occurred between the 1st and 9th centuries CE, before the Ashkenazi community took root in Central and Eastern Europe. The population bottleneck that followed, between the 13th and 15th centuries, solidified the genetic profile that characterizes Ashkenazi Jews today. This data challenges simplistic narratives, whether of uninterrupted descent from ancient Israelites or of complete assimilation into European populations. The truth lies somewhere in between a diasporic people with deep roots in the Middle East, who adapted to and were influenced by the European societies they lived in. It is important to note that while genetics offers powerful tools for understanding the past, it does not define the entirety of cultural, religious, or personal identity. The Ashkenazi experience is shaped by centuries of scholarship, tradition, language, and resilience, not just by DNA. Still, Genetic research offers critical insights into the migrations, integrations, and adaptations that shaped this community. Some mysteries remain. For example, the theory of a Khazar contribution to Ashkenazi ancestry, a Turkic kingdom whose ruling elite reportedly converted to Judaism in the 9th century, has been largely discounted by genetic data. There is little evidence of East Asian or Central Asian ancestry in the Ashkenazi genome. Additionally, the precise origin of the four major maternal lineages remains under study. Were these women Italian, Balkan, or from even farther east? The answer may come with future research and the recovery of more ancient DNA samples. What the genetic evidence makes clear is that the Ashkenazi Jews are neither entirely Middle Eastern nor entirely European. They are a hybrid population formed through migration, cultural retention, and local integration, deeply tied to the Levant through paternal lines, and shaped by Europe through maternal ones. As science continues to refine our understanding of human ancestry, the story of the Ashkenazi Jews stands as a powerful example of how genetics can both illuminate and complicate history. It also reminds us of a broader truth. Our DNA is not just a code of biology, it is a record of history. A narrative written across generations and geographies. One that tells us not just where we came from, but how we've endured, evolved, and remained connected, against all odds. What's your take? Drop a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you're into deep, 
No-nonsense insights like this. Hit subscribe and stay connected.